got Ross here from Dentonator to do the PDR work today. You can see the worst thing was on the wing, but there's various things around the car, top of the driver's door, a couple of little things on the bonnet. But we're now getting to a point where the next stage of this, tidying up the bodywork can be done. A little bit on the bottom of the door and quite a few on the rear quarter. Yeah, perfect. Right, let's see how we should start it. So, there's two ways I could sort of start it. I could either polish it, which I'm probably gonna do actually, only very lightly just to get rid of some of the scuffage. You know, I'm gonna do it by hand as well because I'm lazy. Do it that way. And then it gives you a clearer view of what you're actually dealing with and any any imperfections and stuff. Ooh, maybe a bit much. And a lot of this will just rub straight off. And also, if you use your polisher on it, generally you can't get a polisher into that gap, so it's easier just to get in with your hand and give it a good, good rub off. Best you can. Down here. And get rid of my orange chalk pen. Yeah. Clean, clean all that off. Because what it leaves you with is a lot clearer view on what's actually going on. Because you've got, obviously, obviously, your body line's flat there completely near enough. As you start to bring that back up, where it's cusped right on the body line. So, It'll be a case of get behind it, get a bit of heat on it, heat this up, push that line back. It is slightly curved in on the edge as well, but we'll deal with that later. I'm anticipating I'll probably need to paint it anyway. Well, I do. Potentially. <laughs> but I suppose once you've got it straight, it may buff up and be passable. Yeah, that's it. I mean, with the, there's not really too much actual paint damage. A lot of it does look to be transfer. So we've got a couple of spots there and there. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Get some heat on it. The first sort of uh, first sort of initial pushes. Luckily, because it's so bent, there's actually a nice gap in the uh, liner to squeeze my tool into. I don't even have to wedge it open. So these first sort of pushes are probably going to be a bit, a bit sort of. Uh, Be a bit sort of violent because I'm gonna to have to be quite quite strong with it, but they might just be instantly it's just wanting to come back out to where it should be. It's just a case of not pushing it in one spot and having it absolutely burst out and tighten itself up. You want that metal soft free up, you don't want it to there's a lot of dent men that start and what they'll do is they'll straight away they'll be sitting there, they'll start get the uh, blending hammer out, we'll start tapping that top crown to they say free it up. But if you start if you start straight away by tapping this, all that metal's gonna move. It's gonna move wherever it wants to move. It will some of it will go into there and free it up a bit. But you're always better off pushing it out first and then after focusing on the crown because that metal could move anywhere and you want it to move into that specific spot so you've got to get it out a little bit to then move that metal otherwise it'll just be a nightmare and i just every time i've ever tried to do it that way around it's always ended up ruining the job so for me it's a case of get it roughly the right shape get it into the position you want it and then move then move that metal because it'll want to go to where it should be then instead of just going here there and everywhere um you know you want it to move to onto the line and sort of free everything up Compared to what we were a minute ago. 
that's all sort of back roughly where it should be. Now you can actually focus on freeing that metal up because it sort of knows roughly where it is, you know. This, actually there's a bit of a high there, but I don't know, the line started to come back to where it should be roughly. Once you start moving that metal, that'll free everything up. And you could actually polish it a bit more now, which I won't do in a minute, but I'll uh, just push a bit more of this metal up and then I can start getting onto a bit of tapping and actually start to blend that metal back to the right shape. While you're doing that, do you want a coffee off coffee van? Uh, yeah, I'll go, I'll get, yeah go on then, yeah. I'll be back inside. So what I'm also gonna do is, because my hand hurts, because I'm levering off it all the time. Good trick, get that around there. And then, uh, I'm not killing my hand. Well, I still am, but it's less bad. Can actually get a sort of uh, tool for it, but just use a cloth. Right, so <laughs> the essentials. Do you have any sugar, Ross? No, no, no sugar, please. Thank you. Not going around this side, put that over. What you're starting to see is it's starting to sort of take its shape now. It'll actually start to want to move a lot easier, it'll free it all up. All that metal's roughly where it should be, so it'll move nicely. You can actually start to shape it and do them sort of fine touches. Um, and like I say, a lot of people would start by tapping that crown on. As soon as you do that, it just ruins it. So you're best sticking to it. Push it out as much as you can. actually see what I'm looking at. What I will do in a minute again is I'll actually polish it up, but this time I'll use the I'll actually use the polisher. No. Because again if you start polishing it straight away with a machine polisher you're never going to get into all the little gaps and all you're doing is taking unnecessary paint off, you know what I mean? You, you, you're cutting through that paint for no reason, so you better wait until it's roughly the right shape and then it actually cuts quite nice. Um, which I'll probably do in a minute. Also, I'm lucky with this being steel. It moves nice and easy. It, want, it wants to go back to high, it should have been. No, even the edges started to... There's definitely a bit of... Um, a bit of kinkage going on on this edge across here, this is starting to fold up, you know, from the impact. But it is actually starting to get back to the same shape. And back here as well, I mean, it, it sort of bowed out all here and actually caused a bit of a high down here, all from that impact of that in there and it pushed it out there. So do that first, finish that, get that mint, then work on this because it'll want to just naturally sort of throw towards there. One 
coffee. Thank you. Do you bother using your machine now? <laughs> it's broke at the minute. Is it? Yeah, I've ordered parts, I just need to strip it down and repair it. What's up with it? Water circuit always says it's empty, it loses pressure, it's basically a valve in it. Oh, all right. Um, and I rang them up to repair it and they wanted 245 quid. Let me guess, you Google it, got the parts, and then. I got parts off them. They reluctantly agreed to supply them for £7.95. Oh, right. That's why I'm doing it myself. Yeah, yeah. But it's not like you're short of tools, is it, to fix it, so... No, but I've never stripped a coffee machine, so that should be fun. I can't remember that. This one's pipes and stuff, isn't it? Well, I've ordered both valves that allow water to drain back. Yeah. And I'll just look for them particular parts and replace both them parts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's probably the easiest way of doing it, isn't it? Isn't it? How wrong can you go with a coffee machine? We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Coffee is important. Coffee is important. If I come and I don't have a coffee, it's not good. I, you know what I did? I've got to get a Greg's. Greg's have got new ones. New coffee? Yeah, the. Uh, what was it now? Salted caramel latte. Ah, oh, tried flavoured ones, I'm not a fan. You know what, I, I, I won't try any of I've had a gingerbread one before. Yeah, I didn't want to try it. pumpkin them. spice. Yeah, yeah, I won't try them, I'm not a big fan of them. The I caramel one I thought I'll try, and it actually was all right. I had a Toblerone one, which were nice, from Costa. With that salt. Um, Toblerone, I just that, sorry. I love Toblerone, so I just had to try yeah, it. Yeah, no, fair, that's fair enough, isn't it? I've had, um, yeah, I've got a few. I'm normally a big Starbucks person myself. I'm normally the best. I'm just a coffee fan, so whichever yeah. coffee shop well, I see. I've only started drinking coffee in the last two years, so it's been a big, uh, a big thing for me to, to become well into it. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, and that's just your, that's just your sort of thing. It's a shame, really, because there's a bit of um, a bit of sort of paint hairline crackage going on here, but it's not really affecting anything. So. But with how bad that were, I wouldn't be expecting really to be 100%. Yeah, anyway. it's, it's a high mileage car, really, for what it is. It's not, you know what I mean? It's a best case scenario, isn't it? Yeah, it's got... Oh, right, yeah, I forgot to put a new battery on. I'm thinking, this new battery is a bit weak. I'm going to grab that one. She's beat, she said she's recording, she's back. It'll cut to me just doing it completely polished and looking nice now, won't it? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh yeah, we've, yeah, just, we've just missed that last yeah. 20 minutes. It's like a before and after, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just thinking, it's hard because I just sort of do, there's no like set way to do a dent, you just sort of. As I've always said with dent men, it's experience. You can't just bite tools. Well, no, do it. I mean, I don't. That, that lad just asked me yesterday, he says, Oh, have you been doing this? And I sort of go, Oh, I've been doing it like eight years. So it's like, it's all, it does add up, you know. Self employed four year and obviously four year on my previous company. So it's, you know, you just sort of, yeah. But people have always asked me, like, you do body work, why don't you do dents? It's Every, like, yeah. It's like, because I can't. You yeah. leave dents to dent men. You don't, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's it's like anything, you know what I mean? I can do a mechanic on my car, but it's maybe not to the level of thingy, and it takes time away from what I'm doing. If you're really good money doing what you're doing, you don't need to... You sort of don't need to do... I also think dents are a specialist job, and it's something that... Yeah. yeah you'd have to practice a lot to be able to do it. So you'd have, yeah, to, you'd have to put definitely. more time in than what's worth when it's not your job. Exactly. And that, that's why, it, again, if you're teaching someone how to do this, it is so, unless they've got some sort of God's gift towards you. Know, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I started, I had the idea, it, but it takes so long to, to be confident. You have to understand it, metal, don't you, and how it works. Yeah. That's all you're trying to do is reverse the... Essentially, the yeah, I mean... It, it, you need to understand how that dent's been made to reverse it. Yeah, and you sort of have to have an idea of, you know, if you're working on a front wing, 90% of front wings, you pull the liner back, you're straight on it. Whereas, you know, you work on something like a Bentley, they're a nightmare. They, they, they're they not like, a, they're not an easy thing to work on. 
weirdly Rolls Royces are really easy they're like they're just like a big cavern inside <laughs> um, but you know what I mean you've got to have a, an idea of how to get the biggest challenge Dev, is how you get into it have you got leverage have you got access whether you create your own access again borderline people don't like it other people don't care and have you got somebody looking over your shoulder yeah <laughs> and, you know you know every, everything you if you if you're doing a dent and you've got the customer stood right next to you you've got an added pressure that you didn't need it can almost cause you to create a mistake or slip or you know you feel whenever you're doing something you've got someone we, we've all done it yeah we've all done it so you know that's always an added pressure and stuff like that and it, just everything you know there's a lot of dead men out there that talk a lot don't really do a lot they just they just talk a lot or, or waffle in my opinion whereas i just get on with it and i enjoy the job so i do it and you know got happy customers so i can't complain it's one of them things i always say i'd love to have my business and not have to deal with customers <laughs> yeah but without customers you have no business no, no, that's it. be people cheaper than you will always be people more expensive it's just life it's like anything there's a famous saying you can please some of the people all of the time or all of the people some of the time yeah but not all of the people all of the time that's it that is exactly it. I'm lucky I've got a good customer basis. I've got a nice area I cover. You know, you, you, you it keep makes your job that bit easier, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, I can work for a lot of a lot of private customers and you know, generally they'll use me again if they do ever get it. Hopefully they don't. Um, but you know, I've had a lot of repeat custom, which is good. I get a lot so of you don't go around creating dents for people then? No, no, only rare occasions. <laughs> um, you know, I've had a few funny mistakes, but We'll talk about them. Um, and yeah, just, I've got- They'd be the best ones to video the mistakes. <laughs> that's all, what, not that's what people want to yeah, see. Yeah, not all of them. You know, some have cost me money. Um, and we've, yeah. all, we've all cost ourselves money. Oh yeah, definitely. That Again, that's another thing that a lot, I think a lot of people don't think about is, you, you, you know, you're doing something, but it's quite easy, you know. To, drop some and scratch a panel. You know, if you're working on someone's pride and joy, you, even if you're doing a tiny little dent, one slip and you know, with a tool or you drop something, you, you scratch the car and then you've got to pay for that or... I remember or, years ago, I were doing a paint job which were something simple like a front bumper scuff. Yeah. And it were for one of the guys that worked at auto paint. Yeah, yeah. And we, we'd got loads of cars in unit at that point. So we'd reverse days under ramp with a car on top, yeah, yeah, and we'd held the ramps up off the ramp, off the actual ramp, with two bits of wood, right, and one of them fell off and smacked his wing and dented his wing. So I had to go to the paint shop and get more paint for his car and explain to him why I needed yeah, more yeah, paint for his car. That, paint, <laughs> <laughs> that was a mistake that cost me. Yeah, it, it happens, doesn't it? You know, you hear. It's gonna be like, why do you need more of my colour? The worst. Like, you don't need to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've run out. I've, I dropped it as I went into the shop. You know what I mean? Like, there's always a, there's always a sort of way around. But I mean, it's always better to be honest, in my opinion. Like, I've had, yeah. I've had stuff where you messed up, and you, you know, you sort of, you don't want to. I don't want to be that guy that then gets a message saying, "Oh, I've just noticed this." You know what I mean? And it's, it's. I think it's from you. And I mean, I, if if something happens, you just point it out, and you know what I mean. Some better just to sort it. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of people, customers. I can't even bother with that most of the time. It'll be something like No, they appreciate the honesty. Yeah, they'd rather say, oh, well, you know, most people have said about that. So, and again, it's, I like to, even, you know, if I do a repair, again, no repair's perfect, but I'll point out. I've seen some of your repairs and they look perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll point out the imperfections, though, because that's, that, at the end of the day, that's, if I do a repair and I still see someone, I'll say, you've got that there or this there. And most of the time, you look and they go, oh, yeah, love me. And you're like, oh, sound. But, you know, there's always the odd case of customer being a bit like, oh, you know, there's this bit there and there's that bit there. But, you know, you deal with them again, it's not a, not a lot of fun occurrence, so you just deal with it.
again for me stuff like this is is mainly what I what I specialise in so Do a quick run through, change my tip, so I'm onto a sort of nicely saw it's made out of. Uh, I think it's the same stuff that the. Uh, I think it's supposed to be military grade, whatever it is, but. We love, we love that word. Yeah, some sort of plastic type thing. Um, again, I've seen a lot of videos, especially recently, they always pop up on like. Our military on a budget. <laughs> <laughs> I see a lot of these people, right? And you see them, I've seen them on Facebook all the time. You know, like. They're, they're, Mainly in like America and other countries like that. They've got this strange thing where they'll go, they'll, they'll, they'll just, they'll put a metal tip on and just basically do like 90% of the dent with a metal tip. So you end up with like a million and one pushes when, why wouldn't you just use a tip on that? Something a bit softer. Yeah, do a soft, softer tip. That's like you do it literally. So they create some work that they need to then tap down. Yeah, kind of. What they will know that what they do is because they're only doing them small. But what it does is it puts these sort of like micro imperfections in. You see, them re you do see them with the light on, especially. And what they normally do is they normally fly it after and polish it because it gets rid of a lot of it. Risk but, of going through though, potentially. On and thin it, it just, it's just pointless. Use a softer tip. You know, you can pick detail out of this if you really want to go to a metal tip after. But you'll never really catch it. Or maybe something that's really fine. Yeah, you can't it has that. to be really fine because if you do any sort of force into a push or with a with a metal tip, it'll end up just looking, you know, not pointy. Yeah, it'll end up looking like the pineapple. So, you know, you, you're better off using something like this, which you can again, you can almost blend it into itself by just doing loads of little pushes. But it doesn't leave them them little divots and little marks and stuff like that. You can almost like rub it. So what you're saying is patience is key. Yeah. You you, you That's why you I'm, not, that's why I'm in, not a dent man. Yeah. <laughs> you jump in you jump in a stage. They they go in from really soft tip, big tip, to instantly sharp, small metal tip. Metal to metal is wants to be your last resort, you know what I mean? You want it to look 90% there and then you go for your metal to metal if you really want to get the detail. Again though, you've got to think, that factory paint and that orange peel, you're trying to essentially match that, that's the whole point of dent repair. You're trying to, you know, you're trying to match that repair. Well, if you get every little bit out, you mean orange peel, it just can almost look flat. So you, 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 it ends up the other way then, and you end up looking it stands, weird. It stands out for stands the other out, reason. Yeah, yeah, it stands out for the other reason, because it looks way flatter. Especially if you started introducing a bit of polishing and stuff like that. I just think there's a lot of weird practices with and I suppose when you're working on a dent like you are, you, you're looking at it and thinking, I need to get this right. But you only have to get it about 95% and most other people will not see it anyway. Yeah, as soon as that light goes off it, you're looking look for it. Totally di yeah, it'll look a totally different dent. You're, you're looking for what you need to sort as such. For most people that, you know, that aren't in the cars, just want the cars fixing, you could stop at like 85% in my opinion. And they're happy because they, they never really actually look that close at anything. They say, see a big dent, dent yeah. Paint. They see a big dent like that and you get it to that and say, oh yeah, I've done best I can, you know, the big dent's gone. They'll go, wow. Because, the, you know, to them, a big dent's gone. They've got little imperfections, but you you get pickier the more you stare at paint every day. I stare at it for so long, I see every little bit and it, it, it can get in your head a little bit because you can end up spending a lot more time than you've allocated on jobs. For essentially no reason. You have to you, draw a line at some point. You do have to draw a line, yeah. And I was always bad before, you know. When I first started to work on my own, 
even when I was employed to be fair, but a lot, a lot different, you know, when I went on meal and I thought, right, I can spend a bit more time, get everything to where I want it, but you, you almost then go too far. You start really, really picking pointless things. And the amount of times I've had customers come to me and just say, Leave it. You can fine. stop. You can stop <laughs> like you can stop. You spent you know, I stopped seeing it twenty minutes ago and you're still doing a little bit. You're still like, poking and prodding. Yeah, because it, it's not it's not for me then. It becomes a personal almost attack on myself. I've got a I've got to get that bit that I can't, I can't get to and you know, you, and the other thing is as well, what what can happen? You can end up getting too fussy and end up making it worse. I've mm. had that before where I've There'll be one little imperfection and I can't get into it and I mess around, I spend like half an hour really trying to get to it. You create toolbar for something. And then create more damage, yeah. Because you've pushed past the skin and put like a line in it. And you just think, I oh, should have just left it. The joys of O C D. Yeah, essentially. You just you've just gotta leave it sometimes and just say, look, that's what you're getting. It's to a high standard in my opinion. You know, are you happy with it? Yes. Right, well we're done. You know, I mean we're we're all good then. And that's, that's it. it. And your customers are happy 20 minutes ago. Yeah, that's it. That's that's exactly it. You move on to the next, you know. For me, like I say, it's, it's one of them where your customer's happy, you know, everybody's happy. It doesn't always work like that, though. No, not necessarily. I've, always... I've repainted things that I know a customer would be happy with. Yeah, yeah, because, because I'm you, not. You, yeah, that's it. I, that's the Again, other, costing myself money. Yeah, that's the, that's the other argument, isn't it? You've got to, you've got to, like I say, it's self gratification, isn't it? If you're not happy with something you've done, realistically, it's hard to say, I'm going to leave it. Because you don't, every fibre of your being's going, you need to get that little bit, you need to do that little bit. And, For me, again, I like to always do something and think, you know, I'm happy with it, but I'm not my car. Another thing that's big with PDR repairs and stuff like that is cross-checking. So looking at something from other angles, because you can do you can do a dent in the center of a door, crease through a door, do it one way looking at one angle. You look at it from down, like a downwards angle, and it'll just look like a stitch across because you, you've pushed every little bit and you know, like stuff like this. I could do it one way and think, wow, that's me, and then I could go around the other side and go, God, like how like, how do you know? it, it works, get tools back out. It works well. You get it to a good point one way, then you switch to the other way. You get it good that way. Generally, when you go around to the other side again, it looks bang up. Like it look better, way better. Like you've almost skipped. You know, you've, you've jumped twenty minutes in the repair just by spending five on the other side. I mean, a lot of this should just pull this off, to be honest. Depends how far you're going to go with it, doesn't it? If you're wanting to um, paint it or whatever. I'd rather not paint it. That's what I mean, yeah, I mean we can get it. I mean, dental, has the dental come off? But, it just depends, you know, if you can touch them off of it, see? What the car is, it's not really worth painting, is it? You'd, you'd be better off just polishing as much as you can, getting it straight as you can. And then giving it a, giving it um, not the magic blanket. Um, <laughs> giving it a touching, you know, in, in them places where it is a little bit 
yeah. a little bit paint damaged. Because um, it look, it's going to look 10 out of 10 either way, isn't it? from what it was to what it is. No one's going to look at it and go, that had a massive dent in it and it's all damaged. Well, unless, obviously, they look at the video. But every car's on the you know. You, I used to have a bad habit when I was buying a car, especially when I first started. Super, super anal. I'd look at a car and I'd go, that's had a door paint is not interested, don't it? Like, you know, it could be a mean car beside that because I've got a shoe. Could you're, I... the, you're the person that when you come to buy a car, we've got dealers down there with brand new ones. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's <laughs> it. And that's, that's what it got to the point of. And, you know, you end up losing yourself when you're trying to buy a car. You can't buy anything because you just see infection, infection, infection. You have to set your expectations realistic on the age of the car. If you're, yeah, if you're buying a car that's 10 year old, it's very rare it's gonna have factory paint. It never bothered me with bumpers, weirdly. I was all right with bumpers. It was always... It you was, you was, expect paint on a bumper, though? Yeah, I suppose so. It always bothered me when it was a, a case of, you know, uh, a, a body panel. Because I'd know, I'd know I'd see it like, I know I'd sort of like, pick up on it every time. Whereas the bump corner, I was never really that bothered about. So I've had cars with like painted bumpers. So would you would you prefer stone chips on bonnet or a repainted front end? Oh, good point. Depends your paint it. I'd prefer a repainted front end. Yeah, yeah. See, I'd rather the stone chips than get paint myself. Because at least, I, at least I know I could pick the painter, I could pick the job, and I could pick the finish. Almost, you know. Yeah. Pay a painter for a good, you know, some good quality lacquer. You pay the extra, you say, look, I want it mint, I don't want a bit of tell. A lot of people go in and say, oh, that's cheapest price sort of thing. I want it, bang on. So I'd rather do that myself. I'd rather not money off and have that for myself if you don't. I don't know why you're saying you'd buy it with it on, you can pay me yourself. Oh, would it annoy you paying me yourself? It's a high hypothetical. Yeah. Because I know, if I look at cars with dents in, I once bought a car from a dealership that I used to do work at. And uh, I didn't want to do the dent on it, so I actually got my, uh, my old boss to do it for me. That, I said to him, you'll That's get laziness. paid. Well, no, because I said, oh, you'll get paid if you do it. I don't get paid <laughs> if I do it. So I got the dealership to pay for it. <laughs> so he, he got a pretty, uh, pretty repair out. And never nice doing work on your own car. Because you, you, like I say, you can be too anal and it can sort of spoil it for you a little bit. So it's always nice to get someone else to do it, but you just got to trust them. Working on your own car can feel like a chore as well. Yeah. You're getting paid for it. Yeah, oh yeah, 100%. 100%. It's, I mean, I've, in the last couple of years, I've had quite a few cars, and realistically, I haven't really worked dent-wise on, on any of them. Even though they've had them, I just, you know, I don't really do them. Unless, unless they were bad, you know. So yeah, I'd have to do every dent on any car I've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or CD kicking in. It does, yeah, it, do, it does. Like, I took one of my BMWs to show and I did all the dents on that. I went round it and polished it and everything. And once the dents were done on it, it did look like a different car because it had some awkward dents on it. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it can change the appearance of a car so easily. But if you, especially if you've got something black like this, it's, it picks up every dent. You know, as soon as you look at it, you can see it. Whereas you get like a white car, you maybe don't see them as much because of the light. But no, I do need to. Uh, the next car I get, I'm definitely going to do all the dents on. Get me. I've, I've been a bit lazy with it. Broken too much of my customers. That's what I was looking at, but that's where the kink is underneath. So I don't want it because the paint's flaking off the lid. So I don't want to. Don't worry about paint top lid. No. Try and get rid of them. <coughs> that was obviously. So what I'll do is get the printer on the edge. So you know, just get the, the gooseheads on it. That's a thing to do. 
Yeah, you'll have to go for that. I think it's a chip, isn't it? Yeah, it is a chip as well. I won't be getting really pulled out of that headliner. I want you to get rid of them and then I can touch it in. Yeah, yeah. My mate's tried ringing me, he's been, uh, he's had an M3 like I had. Got, got a cheap swap to need one for it. So he's got like seven grand in it. It's cheap. And uh, had a, like a running issue and I couldn't figure out what it was. And he's had, he's done, um, it now. The one that ends off um, because that burnt out valve and the burnt out valve. So he's done all that. Look, he's done it on himself in the car. And then he's put it all back together. It's still not running right, and he can't figure out what it is. So he, he sent me a video earlier and he says, um, There's a. When you put the cams in, there's like a. I'll show you. I've never seen it like. It's got like a little thing you have to like line up. And I'm guessing he hasn't done that because he says he's going to check it, so <laughs> it could be that. But it says cam crank correlation code or something. Try to change the sensors, you know, to swap the sensors over from the other bank, the other side, and stuff like that. But I can't seem to get it up there. I mean, he's in it, he's in it cheap because he's been, even with all the work he's had to do, the new valve and everything, I think it's only like maybe well under 10 in it. Mm. So it's not exactly, this is still a cheap car, but. It's, um, again, he's just chasing this issue and I think it's starting to be ready. It's always bad when you have to, ones. Yeah, it's always bad when you're a mechanic and you sort of have to give in and say, oh yeah, I'm going to have to take it somewhere. And that's what he was getting to the point of. He's like, I'm just going to try this. I mean, they put it back together, him and his mate, they put it time built, bro. Well, that couldn't be part of the problem. Well, no, they did that. Then they took it back apart and redid it. And they had to, because there's a, I don't know if it's the cap, the bolts for the cam caps. That you, you're supposed to change as well every time. Is it on a chain or a valve? Chain. So when the obviously the, the chain doesn't have to be messed with, obviously you can just take it on and off, can't you? But mm. the the caps that hold the cam in, I think you have to change the bolts for them. There's some bolt they have to change and his mate did it wrong the first time, but to get you under them instantly. You know, the guy said he had another guy interested. Mm. I'm not jumping into a 15 grand car strip like. I could tell you wanted that. I liked it, but I want really pictures. Because he said he wasn't, he said, oh, I wasn't really planning on selling it, so I didn't get many pictures of it. So I don't know. 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 I don't <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it definitely isn't a scam, but it's one of them where you sort of think, well, am I going to get there? And go, oh, it's had every panel paint me on crap. Suppose it's the oldest one of them on left on the road. No seven plates are really like fit off production wise. So it's kind of cool that it's a really early, but it's right high spec as well. But again, it's like, it does just a bit more and get nice, like M2 or something like an M4. Half the price in tax a year. This is the Range Rovers, five grand a year tax, first year. <sighs> Another reason and to avoid them. And your insurance is five grand, yeah. yeah Another yeah. reason to avoid them. Yeah. I worked on one the other day, 24 plus, brand new. Two grand for all that. Yep. You know what, lovely block. But I got, I got a dent up on the top of the door there. And because I've got those funny recessed handles, all in the box section, could not get anywhere near it. Took all the door panel, everywhere, could not get into it. That needed Land Rover to take the handle out because I won't take it. I won't take it out. <laughs> through there and then I'll, I'll give it a look and see. So it might have a little dip on that edge a bit but I don't want to go too mad yeah, and end up. It still looks dipped all the way there. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't know. want to kink that edge out anymore that's all. And have it go the other way. 
little seal at the moment. Is this seal at the moment? When you push in there now, from up here, that looks pretty much there. Yeah, so you know, until it springs back. Yeah, there's like an almost. One of them bits. What's happening? It's hard to see because you're looking at one angle and you think, oh, yeah, it was alright. Move angle. There's a little bit that you're not seeing down. See, now it's not quite there. Oh, yeah, it's not There's a weird like, line there, I don't know what it's going told me about where you bought a big bag of 50 sticks. Yeah, it, it just works like amazing. Just really good. Can't, can't like slay it off. Works, it works in whatever and think, obviously you never get a, no glue's like perfect, but, but it's quite versatile. It's very versatile, yeah. And, I, and I've used loads of brands, loads. And to say this is like some unbranded cheap stuff, Really good. It just it, like say I, you, know, you saw me glue pulling that. Half the time I didn't even have to put any any uh, you know uh, panel wipe on and pull it off. It just comes off nicely most of the time anyway. Sometimes you can't get it off at all because it's just so stuck, which is obviously quite a good thing as well. You was acid to get it off, didn't you? It's stuck. Yeah, just panel just panel wipe and any sort of degreaser. Um, we'll generally get it off. I mean, the acetone's a bit a bit strong really. Some people use it, but you can use it. I've seen people use all sorts. Any alcohol, high alcohol type stuff will work as well. Vodka? Yeah, I was just going to say vodka will probably work. I've never actually tried it, but I bet it works. It'd be an expensive yeah. one, though, wouldn't it? People use a... Uh... And it'll be like, Ross has got an alcohol problem. Yeah. He's gone through 17 bottles of vodka this month. Yeah, 17 bottles of Smirnoff. <laughs> um, a lot of people use isopropyl hat. Isopropic alcohol. I use that for it's cleaning what? things before doing the vinyl. Yeah, so what is it, like 99%? Yeah, 99.8 ounces, something like that. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's where you, you know, that's good stuff. I've never actually... I use the ArtSmart Panel Prep Plus, which is the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I've never actually really used it. I just use, like I say, just general body shop degreaser. I think that this stuff that I've got in that now is Max Mayer. Um, at a body shop and I said can I have some panel wipes and I got in that. So they use Max Mayer so I've got that. Now I think with a bit of a polish. See that don't really dip now, but yeah that looks a lot better. It looks a lot better for it. So you've got a little bit of texture in down this for here. But you don't dip on that edge does it? It doesn't go it just sits nice about it. I don't want to do that, I'll give it a wood whiz over now. <laughs> I give it a whiz over and we'll see what it's like. I don't want to keep. Alex, right. I think if anything, there's a slight dip there, yeah. kind of that area. But it's yeah, a little bit. It but might I mean, be. It might be a bit of an optical illusion. You know, it's, it's, hard to, yeah, it's hard to see because of the angles you're looking at. When, when you're doing something like this. Because you're looking for something, you sometimes see something that's not there. Yeah. That. Well, yeah, you, you're looking for more and more every time because yeah. it's decreasing every Going time. Going back to the perfection. Yeah, yeah, thing. You, you, it's decreasing every time, so you sort of 
am I looking for? Sometimes, sometimes it's best to walk away for five. Yeah, and look back at it and, and go give it a buck, Give it a buck, walk away five, go back and have a look and then you'll probably be happy with it. I've done stuff, looked at it a year later and gone, wow, I did a good job on that. But at the time I remember thinking, it's not good enough. You know what I mean? It's not up to, it's not up to the standard or whatever. Perfect, but hell of a lot better than having a big dent in your cat. over. We've now got a nice straight car. This rear quarter had quite a few dents on it. They're all now gone. And as we go around the car, you can see Ross has done an excellent job. Dent on the back of the roof's gone. 
the dent on the front of the roof's now gone, just a stone chip to touch in. And as we look at the back, small dent on the rear gone, bottom of the door, that's now gone. That is now nice and straight again at the top of the door. And the main one, the front wing, as you can see, that it's not perfect, but after some touching in, flattening and polishing, that is now looking pretty good. And as you can see, there are a couple on the bonnet which are gone as well. So overall, we're very happy with it. The next stage of the Audi is not complete. We need to do some polishing around the whole car. I'm gonna paint both bumpers because there's some scuffs on them. And then the next thing, the wheels are going off for reconditioning. Thank you.